Brexit, why the face? Um, I know the other version of WTF, <laughs> but um, the reason I want to bring this up is the way people are playing off each other. This suits politics. This suits them down at the ground where people are pro or anti EU because they're actually missing the whole point of why this debate started in the first place. I've got strange noise coming in from the window, hang on. Um, so, the point being here, don't, don't get dragged into it. Don't hate your neighbour, don't dislike your friend or whatever. It's, whether they voted in or out, what you've got to watch is what the politicians are up to. They've talked about the possible leaving, they've talked about possible talks, they've talked about possible, possible, possible. When politicians use these words, may, could, might, in talks, looking at, discussing with, they're non-descript, they're non-yes and they're non-no. They are not actually worth listening to. The reason being is they are not actually creating something from it except destabilizing the economy. Every time they talk, they create ripples in the economy. And you've got to understand that from a conservative point of view, um, Theresa May is pro-EU anyway, um, but also the conservatives, they're mainly pro-EU, and even the Labour Party, they're, they're riding the gravy train. They don't want it to end. So creating ripples where, that we, we might leave, we might do this, we might this, I might go to the moon. It's just the same. Now, the reason they do that is it creates uncertainty. Uncertainty means there's a good chance that um, it may get retracted or it may be they can put it forward to people to see if they'll change their minds. Will they change their minds? Uh, I don't think so. And my personal view on this is the problem is stagnation. The UK is stagnant pretty much in everything it does. Um, if you look at the wars in Afghanistan and everywhere else, the only reason the UK steps in is because America sort of shoves it. Um, it doesn't actually do a lot off its own back. Uh, and it's not because British people are any less decisive, it's because their alleged leadership is very, very stagnant. Um, I see it probably more than many other people because of the different sectors I've spent time in. Uh, you will get these people that will turn around and go, there's no I, I in team, there is, um, we don't do negativity, we don't, um, we only do solutions, we don't do problems, all this rubbish they talk about. Then they create awards for themselves and they pat themselves on the back from their ex naval buddy or whatever that they've recruited into the same company because then it's all consistently uh, the same. That's how the UK works, be it in the military, the government, um, or the private sector. There is a lot of the buddy system existing, and they're all trained the same way. They all study the same types of courses, and the whole thing that exists is a lack of responsibility. They will not do stuff that affects their own pension. They will not do stuff that affects their own job. This is why things like the NHS is propped up with consultants. This is why you find that there's more consultants becoming available uh, in the UK than there is full-time employees. Because the thing with a consultant is he can mess something up, then leave, then they just go, oh, it's him. But the fact is you brought them in. But that, that is pretty much how it runs. Cameroon left Cameron sorry not Cameroon the country Cameron left the the MP post the PM Prime Minister post uh, I believe because he put Theresa May in because she's a Muppet um, everything she's done so far she's failed at so there's two ways this is gonna go I mean the first thing Boris was smart enough to like walk away from it but whatever happens half the country is not going to be happy but I tell you now for the next five to ten years staying or leaving most people will not be happy because they're going to affect the economy either way 
Uh, but there's also other stuff in the market nobody really talks about. A lot of businesses in the UK are overvalued currently. Um, as such, there is going to be a shift in that um, structure and it will get blamed on the Brexit. The reality is it is overvaluations of businesses anyway. So that's coming regardless. Another thing is when they say the figures were better than last month or whatever, which they did this month, um, look at what they're talking about. First one was fuel. More people are on holiday and stuff, so they're doing a lot more driving around than normal. There's a lot of reasons that these things are artificially stimulated. If you're on holiday, you've saved up your money for the last year, six months, three months, whatever. Um, so you spend more in the month. Bang. So when they go, oh, it's performing better than expected, don't believe everything they say everything's manipulated what you want to do is instead of just accepting it ask okay so what you're saying has changed oh you're saying fuels up by 1.4 percent but isn't everybody going to Devon and Cornwall for the yeah but they not yeah but that that doesn't make any difference to people going to work it does actually because they'll still actually use probably the same amount of fuel per day um, plus the extra commute to go on holiday so their fuel consumption has actually increased um, You've got to analyze these things because you'll actually start to see there's a pattern of BS. Um, because that BS is what they hide behind, the waffle, the nonsense. Um, because myself, when they say, oh, we're in chat, uh, conversations with China, um, we'll trade with China. Really? Is this the China that turned around and was blackmailing um, or sending stern, wor stern words to the UK about the nuclear program for the power plants um, because it's Chinese money that they invested. They're, they're basically told the, the British government to do as it's told. Um, that China. So we're not only kissing the ass of America, we're now doing the same with the Chinese. Anybody else want on there? <laughs> the UK needs to grow a spine and half of it is actually to do with changing the actual government system. Um, so it's not these same same over and over again but actually people that actually can represent and actually force change for the better of the nation people that are not simply a career politician to milk it dry and and then eventually end up in the EU Parliament or on a quango or on the bank of directors or a board of directors somewhere for supporting a viewpoint of a corporation etc etc um, and the funny thing is I think that's where the Philippines sort of fits in with this because Duterte has rocked that boat big time because uh, he's starting to destabilize all that Trump is a bit of an oddball for the US um, I don't know how far he will go but at the same time when you sit there seeing Hillary in the background you're like I really hope Hillary does not win. Um, it will not benefit the US. Uh, I can't see it benefiting the US and the stuff that allegedly she's been up to in the media, etc., does make it very questionable if she's the one should even be running for the uh, presidency. Um, but hey ho, British exit. My personal view is it's going to hurt the UK either way, but at the same time, we need to sort the leadership out and actually get some people competent enough to um, lead our country in the right direction. And I know I sit here in Spain and talk about it, but at the same time, I am still involved in the UK whether I like it or not. The, the reason being is my wages are earned in the UK and I carry a UK passport. Um, although it's an EU passport, it'll be a UK passport um, if the British exit goes through. So what do you think? What, what do you think is going to happen? Um, I mean, we haven't even talked about the timeline because they're talking about Article 50 being the two year uh, leaving time once the clock starts ticking. Yet, you've got some politicians in the UK talking seven years. You know, enough time to uh, work for seven years and work out to your pension age if you're a politician and getting your buddies on the board relating to this exit and going through all the paperwork and hanging around in bars and stuff, um, siphoning off as much taxpayers' money as possible. 
Welcome to the UK. Thanks for watching.